design a warship to go as fast as you can make her. The smallest in your navy, but punching 10 times her weight. In a light wooden hull with two mighty engines. Load her up with torpedoes and guns and pack her out with explosive high octane fuel and ammunition. Crew her with the boldest and the bravest you can find and send her out to hunt the enemy in the dark of the night. Then, hit him hard and quickly and get out. That was then, this is now. The hard fighting days of the world wars are long gone. But here are two torpedo boat survivors that definitely aren't. MTB-71 and CMB-331 are on point for a new deployment to become the core of a new coastal forces museum. Your orders are, make your way with all dispatch from the Fleet Air Arm Museum to Pretty's Hard, Gosport. Underway! This array of naval firepower greets you as you arrive at the MTB's latest port of call. Explosion, the Museum of Naval Ordnance, just across the water from Portsmouth Historic Dockyard. Part of the National Museum of the Royal Navy, it will now host the new Coastal Forces Museum. After their long journey, Coastal Motorboat 331 and Motor Torpedo Boat 71 will be at the heart of the new museum. Each historic vessel tells a story. With 331, daring adventures of the First World War. With 71, the hard-fought battles of World War II in dark night and dangerous day. From Britain's coasts to Africa and the Far East. It's been a long haul, this one, um, literally, because we hauled these boats from, from Yeovilton um, and, and also in time-wise, because obviously this is another one of those projects that's been impacted by COVID-19. So um, fantastic, just so fantastic and exciting to get MTB 71 down here, um, CMB 331 joining her tomorrow morning. So it's just absolutely brilliant. It's been a, a very difficult and tricky job, like threading a needle, trying to squeeze that boat into this space through all the trusses of the building and everything else. It's been remarkable to watch the guys doing it, actually. First up, paintwork. Back come authentic naval warship colours, with a team from the still operational World War II motor launch, HMS Medusa, turning out to paint ship. That done? Full speed ahead to fit out the new museum. What we want to get across is, more than anything, is a sense of the courageous and dedicated actions of the men and women who served with coastal forces. Um, to really get across the drama and the danger that these men and women put themselves uh, through. Blimey, could I have done that on, on rolling seas in, at night? But yet they did. However expert your crew, if you're captain of the ship, 
you're never off duty and you have to make everything fit. When, when we were first scoping out this project, um, we would wander into this building and everyone would comment on this vast empty building and how fabulously big it was. Once we got these two boats in, and especially this one, MTB 71, she's, she's a big lady. So you know, the building shrank dramatically. Um, and then when you start to get your exhibition structure and your cases and all that stuff, it, it, of course it shrinks. But I think it's going to feel like a really exciting, really dynamic experience and, and really getting excited about, about all that taking shape. MTV 71, she's a 60-foot Vosper motor torpedo boat um, built just before the Second World War. So a fast platform, really just designed to deliver those two torpedoes. Um, these were incredibly dangerous um, uh, craft to be in, uh, operating in wartime. I mean, they are basically fueled by um, petrol, petrol engines mostly, um, no protection at all. Obviously, their, their only protection is their speed, so they're thinly, no, well, no armour at all, just a wooden hull. Um, the, the only job they had was to get in, deliver those torpedoes and get out again very, very quickly. If they took a hit, they were probably finished. So incredibly hard, dangerous work. 331, if I had to pick a favourite, she's my favourite. I love 331. She is a 55-foot Thornycroft coastal motorboat, effectively. So she's a First World War design. So these are that incredible, unique, planing hull, very, very unusual shape. Um, she's incredibly fast, faster than this one, actually. But um, because of that, they had to save weight. So she has no torpedo tubes. She had this rather peculiar um, stern dropping gear. So they drop the torpedo off the back of the boat and then try and get out of the way of their own torpedo very fast. So this is the origins of coastal forces in the First World War. The new museum is as much about the people of coastal forces as their ships. It's a fantastic tribute to those uh, 3,000 odd RNVR officers and hostilities only ratings who joined the war, joined the Navy and served throughout the war. And then after that went back to their civilian occupations. So there you have uh, a museum showing the inner strength of, of, of the British people, that they can come along, pick up the ropes, be extremely efficient, uh, well-trained, and make such an impact. Coastal forces um, in World War II, they operated something like 2,000 vessels. Their record was fantastic. They, they earned more medals than the, the mainstream Royal Navy. They fired more torpedoes. They were more successful. Uh, and yet, they're largely forgotten. And, uh, that's a bit of a tragedy. And uh, Medusa, well, she represents a part of that, and uh, she turns heads wherever she goes. And uh, we feel it's very, very important to keep that story alive, keep that going. We were all as a family, really. We, were, we all worked one as one together. After the Normandy invasion, we cleared La Havre of oyster mines. They lay on the seabed in shallow water uh, and someone had the bright idea that the only way to clear them was to drop depth charges on them. And this is what we did. It was, uh, you know, uh, very close encounters with the mines because there wasn't much time to get out of the way. With the can-do attitude typical of coastal forces in the Second World War, Eddie's ship and her sisters continued their game of Russian roulette until the deadly oyster mines were cleared, opening up a vital port for Allied forces as they fought their way towards Germany. As the new museum opens, that will to serve and survive comes to life with interactive displays, photographs, histories and unique artefacts. And of course, MTB 71 and CMB331 under new orders to tell the world the Coastal Forces story. the exhibition, I like all the history, um, I like how it's presented, it's presented really well in a way that you can really 
get to understand all the history and the boats. And my great granddad, he was on the MTB um, 710. He, his ship got blown up by a mine, but um, George, who's here today, um, he survived and he's um, to safety. George Chandler was a gunner aboard MTV 710 with Tim's great-grandfather, Lieutenant Bone, when the ship hit a mine near the island of Vis in the Adriatic. Lieutenant Bone was lost with most of his crew. George was one of the few to survive. For him, the Coastal Forces Museum brings his service and his comrades back to life. I've been asked on many occasions, were we scared uh, with these actions? Of course we were scared. You know, you've got to remember that coastal forces was made up of young men. And when I say young, I mean, uh, the, the average age aboard my boat uh, was 19, and that included the officers. Uh, and many of them were 18, and you know. So, so we think about this, uh, from our point of view, from a young man's war, day after day, cheek by jowl, with the same people. Uh, you, you live with their worries, they live with yours, you know. Uh, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't give up one second of the time I spent in coastal forces. I think for me, I, I want people to take away the youth of these guys. This is a very, very different, very young branch of the Navy. And even, even those who rose to senior command rank and were you know, in charge of entire flotillas, they're still only in their 20s. These are very, very young men but not too young to make the ultimate sacrifice in resistance to tyranny and in defence of freedom. For George Chandler, a verse inscribed at the Naval Cemetery in Vis brings that message home. Here dead lie we because we did not choose to live and shame the country of whose born we sprung. Life, to be sure, is nothing much to lose, but young men think it is, and we were young.